Hi guys, it's Chris with City Girl Homestead. So, day two of seven of my favorites. Um, today's going to be a pretty quick video. It won't last that long. Well, it might. Never know, I might get to talking. But anyway, one of my favorites, my mom made it all the time when we were kids. Like, every week. <laughs> and for the longest time, I didn't like it anymore because you just ate it so much. It's like spaghetti. I never got sick of goulash. But spaghetti, ugh. and you know, I like tuna fish casserole, but not that often. It's just things that she put on rotation week after week after week after week. Because my mom was young when she got married; she was eighteen. I was she was nineteen when I was born. So, and I don't think she paid much attention to her mom in the kitchen, and so she knew what she knew, and that's how that works. You know what I mean? So, I'm not gonna get on her for that. You know, and. You ever look back at the cookbooks way back then? Holy God, there was like a hundred thousand things to go into each recipe. So I don't blame her for not wanting to try that stuff. I really don't. Because like, if I get to something now and it's more than like 10 or 12 ingredients, I'm like, no, we're not doing it. Because honestly, true to gosh, you know, like how many people really want to sit there and add that much stuff. I mean, it's one thing if it's just spices, but I mean, different items. It, it's just very time consuming. So when I was talking to Tom about what I was doing tonight, I'm like, well, I guess we'll have hot dogs. And he goes, no, this is your favorites week. He goes, we'll make it the way you like it. I do have a good husband. So my mom always made macaroni and tomatoes but she always had ring bologna to go with it. And for those of you Michiganders, you know the Kogel Meat Company. It's gotten very expensive. So this is not, this part of it is not a frugal part of the meal, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> it was $6.64 for this. Just absolutely ridiculous. Bologna used to be so cheap. You remember that? Like, your mom would go get a roll of um, bologna and... You guys can have bologna and cheese for snacks and stuff? Not now. I mean, seriously, it's expensive. So the only thing I do on this is I just cut the ends off. I'm not going to take the skin off because for those of you that don't know, there is a skin on this. And I'm just going to put it in a pan of water. And I'm going to let it cook. Pretty simple, huh? <laughs> now when it gets done, then I'll chop it up into pieces. You know, just chunks. And then you can take your own skin off. How's that? Alright. So now, the next thing I need to do... I did get elbow noodles. Those are done over there. So I'm going to take about a half. Maybe just a little bit more than a half. And if I need more butter, I can always add to it. And we're going to start melting that in this pan. Before I get to cutting, i got to tell you guys a story. So me and Jack, we went to the store today. Um, they had uh, bacon on sale for $3.99. And I'm down to just four packages of bacon. I'm like, well, I want to go get some bacon today. And I want to get a watermelon. I love watermelon. Well, it's still not sweet, sweet yet, but... It'll pass. I always put salt on it anyway. But I thought, well, while the noodles are cooking, I'm going to cut up that watermelon. So I got me out a bowl and I got my little windmill thing out to, you know, cut all the pieces out and whatever. Jazz, my male cat that loves watermelon, he's asleep. Asleep. He comes out in the kitchen. I'm on the second half and he's like, meow, meow. Yeah, and I'm like, how can you smell that in a dead sleep to wake up? And he would not leave me alone till I got him a bowl of watermelon. I swear. You guys, sometimes these, these animals... <laughs> like, my bedroom's at the front of the house. My kitchen's at the back of the house. And I'm like, how in the world, A, can you even smell it? And then he's coming out here begging already. I'm like, holy goodness. So, yes, Bell and Jazz are very, very spoiled. 
And Belle, whatever I eat, she happens to have to stand over me, like if I eat at my desk, and she'll stand over me until I give her whatever I'm eating. And she does that to Tom, too. You have to shake her food down when she first, you know, gets her food in her dish. And then you have to flag her tail like five or six times or she won't eat. I tell you, they're spoiled. I know, I know. You guys are saying, well, you did it. Yes, we did. But you know what? They don't get wet food and they don't get any treats. <laughs> Because our last cat, she got to where that's all she would eat is wet food. And it wasn't the cheap wet food either. It was the very expensive stuff. So I swore we would not do that with these cats. So they've never had any treats. Nor have they had any wet food. I know, we're terrible parents. <laughs> Since I didn't have a big onion, and I like a lot of onion... Because when you think about it, it's just tomatoes and noodles. It's really not that much flavor. Well, I'm going to make it have flavor, but you know what I mean. I like to have lots of onions in it. Now, how much you choose to put in there, that's up to you. I always thought this was a northern thing because everybody I knew up north made it. <laughs> but I guess it's a big thing down south too, so... I didn't know that. I thought we had like, you know, Fago, which is a northern thing because they make it here in Michigan. But I guess maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Some of them add bacon and stuff. Anytime to me that you add meat to this, you're making goulash. That's how I feel about it. Which you might see that this week, too. <laughs> I'm not much of a pasta person, but I do like my tomatoes and pasta. And I do like goulash big time. Both are my favorites. My son, my oldest one, Christopher, he hates both. He doesn't like cooked tomatoes. And he doesn't like hot vegetables. So, yeah, it's pretty much a no-go for him on goulash and stuff. He didn't use to like um, chili either until I started, because I always did what my mom did. You know, you take whole tomatoes and you break them up in there. And he's like, Mom, they're just too big of pieces. So once I went to diced tomatoes, then he liked it. So I'm going to just kind of brown these up a little bit. And then I'll be back and I'll do the next step. I love it when you brown onions. Oh, love it. Maybe it'll be a little bit longer than I thought. Who knows? So I've gotten my, um, and I just touched my finger right on my hot pan. That was bright. I've got my onions sauteing. Oh. Now if you don't have canned tomatoes, then you'd use a 28 ouncer. These are 32 ounces of my own hand, home canned tomatoes. Mm. Oh. You guys want to smell too? <laughs> I used to tell my sister, I don't never go through hardly any tomatoes, but I'm telling you guys, since I started canning my own, so much easier to go through tomatoes because me and... They don't have that metal taste, and they just smell so good. They really, truly do. They just smell so good. All right. Isn't that pretty? Let me show you. <laughs> now, on this, because like I told you, any of my vegetables that I can, I do not put salt in anything. So... We want to salt this pretty good. My butter is salted, so I don't need as much as I think I would need. But I do like a lot of pepper in this. And then, of course, after we get everything mixed together, 
we're going to taste it and see if it needs more. Now, when I was watching some videos about a year ago about the um, onions and, and all that good stuff, a secret ingredient from the South is a little bit of ketchup. So we're going to put a little bit of ketchup in there. Look at that. Oh. It smells so good already, you guys. I just can't even tell you. Oh, look at that. Mmm. This is actually my mom's kitchen. So I can almost, when I make stuff like that, I can almost think about my mom like, you know, how did she do it? Because I didn't cook with my mom. Um, there's a long story to that and whatever, but yeah, I didn't come out in the kitchen. <laughs> but, um, you know, I know she always made it. I don't know if she added ketchup. I don't know. And, well, she's not alive to ask her. So I'm going to let this kind of simmer and blend and marry. And oh, the smell is just amazing. And then I'll be back. All right, so now all the flavors are married. I've got my noodles and dedication of my mom. I'm using her spoon actually. Now, several people tell you to cook off all that juice. I do not do that. And the reason I don't do that is because the noodles do absorb a lot of that juice. Otherwise, you're just going to have dry noodles, and I, yeah, I don't want that. All right, so let's get this stirred together. And then, of course, we're going to have some corn on the side, not eared corn, but, or you know, not corn on the cob, I should say. Look at that. It's like magic. Now, some people will add some tomato sauce to this if that's what they want to do. I don't do that, but you can. With the, not even tasting it, I can tell you it needs more honey or more mustard. I had to turn my bologna down a little bit. All right. Feel like a kid in a candy store. Because <laughs> with doing all the recipes, and, and I'm sorry if this is duplicate week for you, but, you know, with doing all the different recipes that I do, I really don't get a chance to do my favorites. And not that I don't really, really love the recipes that I try, because I do. It's just nice once in a while to have the home comforting things that, you know, make you feel good. So... Thanks for being patient with me this week so I can have some of my favorites. I'll tell you, it could go on for a couple weeks, but I won't do that. <laughs> All right, so we have to give it a taste, right? Just to make sure that, you know, it's got enough of everything in it. Can't do that. Mm. Oh, I love it. I am going to put a little bit more um, salt and pepper in it, though. <laughs> it just tastes like a bit of home. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's the simple things in life, guys. Sometimes it's just the simple things. And you know what, actually, this is a very, very budget-friendly dish, too. I mean, other than the bologna, but you can substitute that with um, hot dogs or hamburgers or not have any meat at all. So, but this part of it is very, very inexpensive. <laughs> so, waiting for Tom to get home, and I will get everything on the table, and he can taste it, and... You guys will see. 
It's amazing. Well, hi, Tom. Hello. How are you? Tired. Long day. Mm hmm. Might get your air conditioner fixed this weekend, hopefully. Yeah, that would be nice. All right, so there's his dinner Ma macaroni, tomatoes, corn, bologna. and bologna. Kogos does have the best bologna. Mm. You can try the tomatoes and noodles. That's just a, such a comfort food, isn't it? Mm-hmm. He likes that. Was the bologna okay, too? Okay. <laughs> we think, Jack. He's been mowing. Well, that's good. The tomato noodles. You love bologna, so that's not even a question. <laughs> All right, we're going to let these boys eat. Tomorrow's going to be another easy one, but my favorite. Look at Belle's over there looking. Wondering what she can have. So I will tell you, next week is actually going to be um, a suggestion from Bernie. I'm trying to put a menu together. <laughs> I'm having a harder time than I thought I would. But Bernie, your suggestion will be next week. And then... You guys can suggest things anytime. It doesn't have to be a whole week of anything. Just make sure it's cheap to make, easy, and just, you know, put it down in the, in the comments below. And maybe we'll do a suggestions week if I get enough of them. Except for caviar. We don't want that. I said it has to be cheap. Caviar's not, not cheap. Caviar's not cheap. No. Bye, Belle. Say goodbye, Belle. <laughs> meow. Meow. Oh, and we have watermelon for dessert, too. All right. You guys have a blessed night. Be a blessing. Bye, Tom. Bye, Tom. Bye, Jack. Bye. You guys have a great night.